Hi everyone, here's the Bookchemist once again, and today I'm reviewing Wonder Boys, Michael Chabon's second novel, which I reread recently, and which is one of those books I recommend rather freely, especially to people who maybe are aspiring writers, maybe they are young people who uh, like to write fiction and would one day like to publish their work. This is an engaging tale with a roller coaster plot and quite a few unexpected turns of event. Uh, I remember the first time I read it, I did not at all see see uh, some of the twists in the plot, I didn't see them coming. It is a hilarious novel, I didn't quite remember how laugh out loud fun it was uh, in certain parts. It's truly a brilliant comic novel, but it is also almost quintessentially a book about the craft of writing, about how writers are and behave, uh, be it alone or when they're in groups, why people write. Uh, it deals extensively with the curse of the writer, uh, which is here named the Midnight Disease, and with writing as some sort of uh, a feat of liberation which inevitably also becomes a kind of prison. The first thing that needs to be said about Wonder Boys though, in my opinion, is how impossibly well written it is. This book is written in a Baroque style, full of similes, it's clotted with comparisons and with lyrical turns of phrase, um, and you know, Shaban sometimes takes a paragraph to express a concept he could have given you in a word, but that's that's all right because that paragraph makes you laugh uh, and it's pleasant to read uh, and features a, uh, quite a few interesting adjectives. I recently reread The Mysteries of Pittsburgh, Chabon's debut novel, and I remarked on the fact that that too, of course, is beautifully written. Uh, I, in my review, I read the final paragraph, which is uh, arrestingly beautiful, if you ask me, but the jump in quality in Chabon's writing from uh, Mysteries of Pittsburgh to Wonder Boys is disorienting. As I mentioned in that review, Wonder Boys is the kind of book that's so well written that as I reread it, I had to read some parts out, out loud to myself. They were so so beautiful, so interesting and fun and poignant. One of the reasons behind that jump in quality is that quite a few years passed between Pittsburgh and Wonder Boys. Uh, Pittsburgh was published in 88, I'm pretty sure Wonder Boys was published in 1995, because after Pittsburgh, Chabon uh, got to work on a uh, sophomore novel about the perfect baseball stadium in a Maryland town, I think, that eventually, after five years of work, he realized he would not be able to complete. Uh, and the story of that novel kind of uh, constitutes the basic premise of Wonder Boys. This novel is about the main character's trouble with a, a novel that he is not able to complete, that just keeps growing and growing and absorbing so much of his working life. But if you're interested in the actual story behind that, in Chabon's real trouble with his second novel, you can read about that in an essay called Diving into the Wreck which is collected in Maps and Legends. I like that story very much because I think all of us sometimes get stuck on a project that is going nowhere and maybe consumes so much of our time without us getting anything in return, and it's always good to be reminded that uh, that happens to people, and some of us had to spend five years on their, of their lives on a project that then had to be thrown out the window, and that all the same they carried on and they had a successful career and everything was fine. Uh, admittedly, the story will be more relatable if Chabon didn't later win a fucking uh, Pulitzer Prize, uh, because that's, I don't think that's a realistic expectation for either of us. I mentioned that Wonder Boys has a kind of roller coaster plot full of twists, but at the same time, this novel, like Mysteries, moves well within the domain of literary fiction. There is some action here, but it's quite limited to a, just a couple of very brief scenes, but at the same time, the uh, underlying tensions, the currents that are very perceivable in Wonder Boys make, made me think of genre fiction, of adventure stories and horror fiction too. Uh, I, one of the most beautiful reflections in Wonder Boys has the narrator, who is a supposedly famous novelist um, in the novels world, uh, draw some comparisons between his life and that of a horror writer, a Lovecraftian horror writer he admires, and the stories of this writer, and he perceives some parallels between what he writes, the literary fiction he writes,
sites and the horror fiction about uh, alien gods and forbidden cities that this writer was writing. What I'm trying to say with this rather confusing parallel is that all throughout Wonders Boys it's very perceivable that there's a horror story in here about an inescapable curse that it's hidden just below the surface of this um, uh, rather hectic weekend uh, revolving around a literary festival at a Pennsylvania college. Just like in Pittsburgh there's a recurring theme in here of haunted houses and cursed people with lost siblings and bizarre family histories that's very perceivable and that Chabon plays very fruitfully with. I mean, to give you an example of how much this is clearly a repressed adventure story, at one point in here the protagonist slaps another guy with a dead python, and that's not even the strangest thing that happens in the book. Uh, speaking of that theme of curses, the midnight disease, the curse of the writer, is the central curse uh, around which most of the novel's characters uh, revolve. Their characterization is largely based on this belief that in a way, all writing is horror writing, or at least that it deals with the, the void at the heart of creation and with the meaninglessness of life. And all of the book's reflections on what writing is about, how writers are and behave, they stuck with me from the moment I read the book up until now. And I still believe there's so much truth in this novel, but at the same time, on second reading, I'm not so certain anymore all of these reflections should be taken as seriously as I thought. Uh, one of the things the book makes explicit, in this it reminded me a lot of uh, Barney's version by Mordecai Rickler, one of my favorite novels, is that writings are uh, sorry, writers are quintessentially bullshitters, uh, almost by definition, and so that not everything they say should be taken too seriously. And I believe that in some of the way some of these characters are uh, characterized, especially James Lear, but also the protagonist in the way he, he talks about himself with so much self-hatred and spite, I believe that maybe at times he is just being overly dramatic and he knows it. Wonder Boys is a bizarre novel because on the one hand it's so good and so hilarious and it has such an interesting plot and it's filled with so many unforgettable reflections that I won't hesitate to recommend it and by all means I do recommend this novel kind to everyone because it's uh, it's enjoyable enough to be appreciable really by anybody I believe uh, and I absolutely do recommend it to young aspiring writers, maybe don't take all of its reflections too seriously, but do read it. Uh, at the same time, I, I have to admit that it clearly has one or two flows. Most notably, uh, you know how much I love uh, Chabon's and, well, say, Lovecraft's or Pynchon's Baroque style of writing, uh, this kind of maximalist style? Well, the line between Baroque and obnoxious is very... It, it's a fine line, and quite often in the course of the novel Chabon trespasses it. At one point, for instance, uh, when the, the narrator has to say that a character is of Asian descent, he says that she has an epicanthic fold, and why do you have to be like that? You know I'll have to stop reading and get a fucking dictionary. Was that really necessary? I also have a problem with the final 70, 100 pages, not because I don't like the ending, I think it's the perfect ending for this book, but I do believe that once the novel reaches its climax, it takes kind of a long time uh, to be over and there are maybe one, two, three scenes toward the end that weren't really that needed after all. But obviously those are minor flows and I'm only mentioning them because otherwise the entire video would be me going all fanboy over Wonder Boys. I absolutely recommend it. It's, it may be a good introduction, a good entry point into Chabon's Hoover uh, if you feel like The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay um, is a bit maybe too long uh, for you at the moment. This is 200 pages shorter than that one, and both of these are crowd pleasers. Cavalier and Clay is 
probably the better novel, uh, but still, uh, I'm sure you'll have a great time with either. I'll keep rereading those among Chabon's works, which I haven't touched in a long time. Uh, the next one I'm going to reread is probably Summerland, uh, and I'll probably film a review on my channel. Let me know what you think about Wonder Boys, if you like it as much as I do, if you think it's uh, its flows exceed its good moments, if you found it as hilarious as I did, uh, if you agree with its reflections on writers. Let me know about all of these things and more in the comments below, and thank you for watching as always, guys. Bye, guys.